You ready? You, oh, hi, you're new. <laughs> oh boy, let's talk about sequences. Uh -huh. A sequence is a function whose domain is restricted to the integers. I-N-T-E-G-E-R-S. Wait, pictorially, if I looked at a graph of that function and I just drew one up there, if I um, restricted that, oh, you want to get in here? If I, if I restricted that to the integers, mm, yeah, we got rid of the function and now we only have the function evaluated at those discrete points. And that is a sequence. You can have some notation. Oh, buddy. Yeah. All right. So you'll see it. They usually use little letters and a subscript N for the index. I don't know. Index starts with an I. Why don't they use I? Sometimes they do. Sometimes they put it in curly brackets. Yeah. And sometimes they put it in curly brackets and give you a starting N and an ending N. These, when you think these, you think the sequence. Yeah. I'll just use this one three and Y because I had it over there. And when you see that, you want to think of A of n, kind of like the function f of x, but we've restricted it to the domain. So if you were looking for the first four, that would be a1, because 1 times 3 is 3, a2, because 2 times 3 is 6, a3, because 3 times 3 is 9, a4, because 3 times 4 is 12. All right. Now, these could go on forever, and whenever you see something like that, that's what that means, but that's going to be rare right there. There are some, hey, 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 all eyes on me, like Tupac. Oh, I got your Machiavelli. This is your recursion. What does that say? That says that, huh, you're still with me, good. All right, that says that the next term depends on the term before it and the term before that. One of the famous, hey, hey, where'd you go? Where'd you go? Get over here. Get, 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 get over here. I'm talking about this one. It's kind of famous. If you take the sum of the two before it here, one plus one is two. One plus two is three. Two plus three is five. Three plus five is eight. It's kind of famous. <laughs> Whoa, hey, first time ever, I'm releasing my private collection. <laughs> yeah, all right, so in that private collection, it's um, a playlist at the end of this video. I think I have it set, so the only way you can get to it is through this video or the playlist. But in that playlist for the recursion, you're going to find these. Here's an example of a recursion. Yeah, and then in a separate example, then you get these um, list of numbers and make a recursively defined sequence for that. Now, I get it. There's other ways to find that end, but that was specifically for the recursion. Well, now, I'm over here. Yeah, get here. So, over here, sometimes these sequences, they go to a number eventually. What am I talking about? I'm talking about a sequence converging, okay? A sequence converging, okay? That means that it goes to a certain number. Here I have that function, and if I took that function and restricted it to the integers, you would see this dot, the dot, the dot, 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 dot. But what do you see? These dots eventually go to L. Yeah, I wish you'd go to L. Hey now, relax. In the private collection, I have an example where we just explore this sequence graphically to see whether or not it's going to go to L. Now, follow me. That's right. Come on. Come on. All right. Over here, you have some other techniques to see whether or not a sequence converges other than graphically. Ah, oh, yes. We say a sequence converges if the limit as n goes to infinity, we're talking about the tail there, as n goes to infinity, if it goes to L, then the sequence goes to L, where L is some real number. All right, people. You ready? You ready? You ready? All right. Um, you have tools. Tools to find this limit. And first tool you have 
all the limit properties that you had back in Calc 1. That's going to be for something like this in the private collection. Yeah, at the end of this video, there is a playlist, and this playlist includes all of these examples. Yeah, all right, so click on that. This one, you would use limit properties. Yeah, this one, you'd probably use limit properties also. Split it. Some, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, but what about this? That's not going to work with any old limit properties. Hello? Hello? Thank you. Hey, hey, hey. Okay, yes, you. You pay attention. Pay attention to this. The second thing you have is if you run that limit as n goes to infinity of some sequence and it turns out to be infinity over infinity or zero over zero, your spider senses are tingling. That's right. There you can use lopi. Hey, hey, hey. You can use L'Hopital, yeah, you remember that, probably not even spelled right. But remember, if you have these indeterminate forms, then you have to do some algebraic operations, B, before you get it into this, then you can use L'Hopital's so many memes on the internet. Hey, 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 all right, you're out of here. One more thing. Oh, so you'd use those L'Hopital's on something like this. There, what do you have? You have one to the infinity and the square root of that. Oh God. Here, what do you have? That's infinity plus infinity. Oh God. Or is it? That's infinity. Natural. Oh, that's minus infinity plus infinity. Oh God. Oh God. On that one, you would do some algebraic operations so that you can use L'Hopital's. Then when we get down to here, oh man, that looks like zero over zero. So you'd use L'Hopital's on something like that. But on something like this, oh God. On there, you're going to need to use that squeeze theorem. Oh boy. What's that say? That's a different one. And these are all in the private the collection so if you want to see these click that playlist at the end of that so much and this is just the minimum as I do more I'll add more so this is just the introductory video to get to those examples get to that now the squeeze theorem also called the sandwich I don't like that sandwich thing that they talk about anyway whatever they talk about bread bread meat at a certain point and that happens if one sequence is under and one sequence dominates and both the end sequences go to L, then necessarily the limit of the middle one goes to L. It's like this bread and this bread, the meat in the middle at that L. It's kind of like, it's kind of like, it's kind of like these dots are all above these dots and these dots go to L and these dots here are all under those dots and these dots also go to L, then everything's just gonna go to L. But what? Hello?